training vignette number three. This is Scott with Dedicated Threat Solutions, and this topic today will be situational awareness. Now, situational awareness is a huge, huge topic, and we are barely going to scratch the surface. We're just doing very top layer stuff, and while it's going to be basic, it is also absolutely critical because I'm going to say some things that are probably going to go against what you believe about yourself. So let's hop into this. So let's define situational awareness, and we're going to go directly to Army Field Manual 1-02, knowledge and understanding of the current situation, which promotes timely, relevant, and accurate assessment of friendly, competitive, and other operations within the battle space in order to facilitate decision-making. An informational perspective and skill that fosters an ability to determine quickly the context and relevance of events that are unfolding. Now that is a mouthful definition, and there's a lot there to unpack. So again, this is a military definition, but it doesn't matter if you're not in the military because the concepts that are in here still apply to you if you have a dedicated threat that is potentially looking to harm you. So you want to promote timely, relevant, and accurate assessment. Notice friendly, competitive, and other operations within the, and within the battle space. So you're taking note of everything. You're not just hyper-focused on one aspect at the exclusion of all the others. And all the information that you're gathering is going to help you make a better decision. And then situational awareness is not just about being aware of your environment, but how you proactively interact in your environment based upon what you see and what is occurring in order to extrapolate a future action with the objective of keeping yourself and others safe. And that's kind of my definition of it. And that's just expanding on how you apply the concepts and the paradigm of situational awareness in your world. You have to be proactive with situational awareness. And that sounds easy. A lot of people are not doing that. So here's the hard truth that I always say, and this is what rubs people wrong a lot. Most people are not near as good at situational awareness as they believe they are. It's a skill that needs to be practiced and developed. I've had conversations with somebody once who said he has situational awareness 24 hours a day, to which I responded, do you sleep? And he said, yes. I go, then you're not situationally aware, to which he just started arguing and saying he was. It is what it is, you know. Um, but situational awareness is a skill. All skills need to be practiced and developed, and it's no different with situational awareness. The problem is we hear it so often that we just assimilate and assume that we are already good. We just assume that, hey, my head's up, I'm looking around, I'm good. But there's a lot of mental skills that go in with situational awareness that I guarantee you a lot of people are not practicing, they're not building those skills, and they're not developing their situational awareness. They have a false sense of security because they think they're situationally aware when they're actually not. So I took these photos in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, and I wasn't even hiding the fact that I was taking these photos, and both of these guys had no idea because they're in that 45-degree syndrome with their heads buried in their cell phones. Cell phones are one of the worst devices for situational awareness because it's taking us away from our immediate environment, and we're focused on our phone to the exclusion of literally everything else. Because a lot of people that are on their phone also have headphones in. So when they're on their phone, all of their vision is on the phone. And if they have the headphones in, their hearing is limited as well. So two of their major senses, vision and hearing, are now almost completely gone. The reality is, is you cannot respond to a threat that you do not know exists. And while that's common sense, like I said, a lot of people think they're way better at situational awareness than they really are, and they should be wearing this button because they're walking around and they are not aware of what's going on in their environment. So situational awareness is impacted by what you see and what you observe. If you gather too little information, you're not going to have full scope of the environment that you're in. And on the flip side of that, if you gather too much information, you're going to quickly get information overload which is going to do two things. It's going to slow down your decision-making process, or two, it's going to completely shut it off and you won't respond to any potential threats. And both of those situations are bad, so there's a, a real balance act with situational awareness. So a practice drill that I want you to work on, 
For the next week, your task is to identify all entry and exit points for each location you visit. So this is uh, going to help you develop an evacuation plan should you need to escape an area uh, in a more rapid manner. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, I'm not doing this drill because I already do it. No, I, I doubt that you really are because most people say they do this, but in reality, most people are not doing it. Because when I go out and I'm with friends or other people who are safety conscious people and I go, where are the exits? The first thing they do is they lift their head and they look around. Nope. If you have to look around, you don't know where the exits are. So when you go, one of the first things I want you to do is literally scope out at least two entry and exit points of whatever location you're at, whether it's a movie theater, uh, a restaurant, you're at a school, a place of business, wherever. But And then another thing I want you to do with this is test the people that you hang out with, especially if you're in law enforcement and military. And when you're out and about, just randomly ask people, hey, where are two exit points right now? And again, if they have to lift up their head to look around, they don't know where they are. So again, this seems like a basic drill. And everybody will tell you that they, they already do this and they know the answer. I'm telling you they don't. So it's a skill, again, that needs to be practiced and developed. Another drill I want you to do for the next week, put your cell phone away completely when you're in public. I mean, if you have to if you get a text or something and you want to look at it or you need to look something up, that's fine. But for the most part, put your cell phone away because then I want you to keep your head up, scan the environment. I want you to take note of what you're seeing. But I also want you to identify potential threats that you would have missed if you were on your cell phone. And I guarantee you there will probably be some threats. And I'm not talking dedicated threat that somebody wants to kill you. But there will be potential threats that you would have missed if you're head down in that 45 degree syndrome. So some safety strategies when in public. Keep your head up so you can see what's going on around you. Looking is not enough. You can look at an object and not see it. And we hear this all the time when people change lanes and they get into a car accident and they'll tell the responding, oh, I looked and, you know, boom, I turned lanes and I, I hit that person. Looking does not equate to seeing and people confuse those two. So when you look, you actually have to see and process it is what you are seeing. Routinely scan the environment. And when I say this, I'm not talking about in a paranoid or hypervigilant manner. Just head up, look around, look and see what it is that's going on in your environment. What you're looking for, is anybody paying too much attention to you? Uh, recently, I was out at a restaurant with my family. And there was a person there by himself wearing sunglasses in a restaurant. And I couldn't, he never moved. Like his, he would eat, but his head stayed the same. And it looked like he was staring at it. So it was just something for me to pay attention to. Was he a threat? No, but he was a potential threat. And if I'm head down in my phone or not scanning my environment, I would have completely missed that. And then look for anything that's out of the uh, ordinary. One of the things that I will always say is trust your intuition. Your intuition is right 100% of the time, whether you want to believe it or not. So if you get that feeling that something is wrong, but you don't know what's causing that feeling, what that is is that's your subconscious mind picking up on a danger cue in your environment that your conscious mind has not yet picked up on. Believe it whether you understand it or not and take appropriate course of action. I love this quote from Gavin De Becker. Only human beings can look directly at something, have all the information they need to make an accurate prediction, perhaps even momentarily make the accurate prediction, and then say it isn't so. So humans, we're supposed to be the smartest creatures on the planet, but we engage in some of the dumbest activities. If you see a threat, acknowledge the threat, deal with the threat, do whatever you need to do to be proactive in your safety. If you have not yet read The Gift of Fear, I don't know where you've been for the last two decades, Go out and get that book. It should be, and anybody who cares about safety and security, that book needs to be on your bookshelf. So again, when uh, out in public, uh, if you identify a potential threat, take appropriate action. And there's many steps that you might take, and it might just be continued further observation. Avoidance, uh, if possible, leave the area. But I really want to stress, 
leaving is not always an option. And if you work in a job where there's potential safety concerns with what you do and the response you always get from your supervisor or your management is that whenever you face danger, you should just leave. Those people should not be in those positions because they have no understanding of the concepts of safety and security, and they should not be making decisions about your safety. There are plenty of situations in workers in all types of fields that were not able to just leave the environment. So that's not always an option. If it is an option, by all means, take it. But you cannot just have the knee-jerk response that that's always going to be available to you because it's not. If needed, call the police. If it's a false alarm and nothing develops, guess what? Those police officers can go back to do other calls. But it's better to call. if You suspect something, get help rolling as soon as possible. If it turns out to be nothing, that's awesome. If it turns out to be something, it's better the police get there sooner rather than later. And if you are in imminent danger, you need to take uh, whatever safety precautions are necessary so that you survive that encounter. Again, to get good at situational awareness requires practice to identify potential threats in your environment and respond accordingly. This is not as easy as people want to make it to be. It doesn't have to be hard, but it does take practice, and you, you have to spend some time on it. Those two practice exercises that I gave you, I legitimately want you to do those. If you can't walk away from this video and commit to doing those two things, then safety is not a priority to you or your level of confidence exceeds what your actual abilities are. Or maybe you actually are that squared away. Again, I got some books on Amazon. If you want to go check those out, please do. I'd appreciate that. If you want to reach out to me, I'm at info at dedicatedthreatsolutions.com. And my website is dedicatedthreatsolutions.com as well. You can link up with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Indeed, and you can check out my author page on Amazon. And if you're liking these videos, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you get notified when I put out some new videos, which I will continue to uh, do. As always, train hard, stay safe.